Okay, right. Passing the minds back, right, you know, to when the news of Jody broke. You know, I had a friend, and this, this is something I wanted to initially talk about, but I didn't know whether to or not. Um, and it all ties in with creative integrity and, you know, sticking to a recipe that works and all that business. But basically, casting our minds back to when jo- the news of Jodie broke, um, I had a friend who was and still is part of the Doctor Who Today group. Right. And I think we're all, we're, all, we're all aware of that group, aren't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, she was originally anti-Jimbal and, you know, she was, you know, became a pro Jody, and, you know, not only that, but she and others began effectively bullying people, people I know, and I know that you know, I'm not going to mention any names, yeah. but, you know, we know, mm-hmm. um, and talking about them behind the back, and myself included, um, and, you know, we all know what they're like, and we know they're not worth wasting their breath, our breath on, but there was one statement that I found that was used constantly by these blinkered cock wombles that was that really started pissing me off. God. Um <laughs> and it was um well it's something that's been talked about way back in we, we dealt with this and we moved on but it's something that grates on me every time and I watch your you know your stream and whatnot all the time and this goes through my head every time I watch it, even though it's never really touched on anymore. It's just that the well it is touched on because it's all about the doctor being male, but the actual sentence is it's not been said in the show at all that the doctor is male. Mm. Now, you know, I just want to start here like by, you know, countering every person who's ever said that statement by saying they're blatantly, foolishly and completely wrong. Um you know, I, I've used like an analogical example with people before in the in that that same group in different channels, directly to them in personal messages, trying to get this across to them, and they just seem completely incapable of seeing the facts in front of them. You know, they're, they're the perfect exact example of cognitive dissonance, in my opinion. You know, like like the example I use is like, yeah, you know, picture this scene. Okay, like there's a man, okay, yeah. a man sitting on a sofa in front of a TV, oh. right? Another man's in the kitchen cooking dinner. What's your first thought? Okay, uh, yeah. your first thought, like the majority of us will all sus- suspect something, like that a couple, but we'll yeah. hold back on more information. Like, okay, so like, say that, let's say like the, the guy in the kitchen comes through, glances at the TV a moment, yeah. and then comes up behind the guy in the sofa, hugs him, kisses him on the cheek, and then goes back to the kitchen. Mm. Now that, that will be an affirmation that your initial suspicions are correct. Now, yeah. go further than saying the guy on the sofa had like a pride badge on, but points being made. No, I know what you're trying to say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did either of those men verbally say anything? They didn't. Uh, did they have to? No. Like, you know, as, rhetor- as rhetorical as the questions are, I'm going to go on and answer them anyway. No, no, they didn't. They didn't have to talk about them at all because the description of the scene, that visual narration of their actions speak volumes. I mean, we could have one guy approach the other and verbally say, you know, I'm homosexual. Um, you know, in a relationship with the other, but that'll be insulting to the viewer, and it, the audience doesn't require this level of hand holding. Now, taking that back to Doctor Who, right? The simple question of did they ever say in the show that the Doctor was a male alien? Well, a resounding bloody hell, yes. Verbally, they didn't, because like I just said, like you know, that would be completely insulting to the audience for half a fucking century. I'll <laughs> um, be generating twelve consecutive times, thirteen if you count John. Oh, Hurt, no. The viewers don't need telling the protagonist is a male alien. It simply goes without saying, and that's the key thing. It goes without saying, and that's all it is. Basic logic and common sense. So, like, you know, if anyone saying that the show never never said that the Doctor's male, they're just imbeciles. You know, any drama, any, not just Doctor Who, any drama, right, yeah. that was just verbally, if it's just, if it's just about what's verbally said, then, you know, that's, that, that's just one hell of a shallow shallow industry yeah. you know you know and it goes on it goes on you know i'm sorry about if i'm you know i'm not letting you talk here but no I'm, no I'm, no, I'm, no. This, is, this is bleeding brilliant <laughs> but you know what no, you've no, hit the no. nail on the head though you've actually hit yeah. the nail on the head keep going though yeah yeah but like, what they say next is well they say like well who says doctor who can't be a woman people would write to the bbc and complain if they thought it was that crazy well i'm sorry but the show itself I say, again like i say half a fucking century of background law you know, then you've got the years of, of telling the audience that he's a man by having him regenerate 12 times, you know, it, into a male. The whole thing, you know, goes without saying thing. Mm. Then you've got the episode, the classic who, where it's stated he'll become a new man with mm. regards to generate, regeneration. Then you've got, like, a new who, where the 10th... Yeah, he, he says, says, he's a common... He, 
it, you know, he said, even if I do change, it still feels like dying. A new man saunters away and I'm dead. Yeah. A new man, man saunters away. I got the, the, the big one, the big one is Capal- Capaldi's episode of Listen, right? Where we see the doctor as a young boy. Yeah. There's, there's no pronouns in that. Him, he, not just uh, said by everyone, you know, to the, the, to the kid in the bed, you know, that makes him a male Gallifreyan long before he became a Time Lord. You know, when you say all of this to them, and they, they, they suddenly become ignorant, cognitive distance again. Uh, the great thing about the role, it has no limits. You know, but fucking hell, yes it does. As with any cult show, as, a, as long-standing characters with a development story structure, you're guided by the boundaries of law of what went before. The limits of a histo- no, the limits of what they're talking about, they say they've got no limits, is fucking limits. The limits of the historical building blocks of what made the character over 50 years and to express that it has no limits is sheer fucking ignorance. <laughs> you know, you know, like I said, I've never watched... I've never watched season 11, you know, and I've got no, no intention of, you know, but as I say, I've, I've watched both Black, watched Nerd Rotting, watched, watched them all, and, you know, you know, boycotting thing, like I said, you said before, you know, it's it's basically what I've done. I've, I've stuck to my guns, um, you know, um, you know, but the, you can see by the, every review that the, 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 the people have made um, that, like, you know, the, the, the political feminist SCW agenda is, 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 is blatant. It's so, it's, it's so blatant, it's just unreal. Yeah. Um, and I, I made a list. And I'm going to read out this list. Each of the ten episodes, right. Episode one, right. The one, okay, episode, episode one, the one about the f- female empowerment where men are made to look weak, feeble, and incompetent in order to make women look strong. Episode two, the one about feeble empa- female empowerment where men are made to look stupid in order to make women look intelligent. Uh, episode three, the one about discouraging racism where all white Americans are made to look racist and black Britons are made to, made to know nothing about black history. Episode four, the one about Donald Trump and American capitalism. Episode 5, the one about female empowerment where a weak and feeble pregnant man gives birth while all people in authority or in services which are run by men are portrayed as being incompetent and deliberately putting, pe- putting people's lives at risk. Episode 6, the one about, about tolerance and where the British Empire and Hindus are made to look evil so that Muslims can look good and where a group of misunderstood perverts travel through time to get their kicks watching people they don't know die because snuff videos are only too damn Dimensional. Episode 7, the one attacking Amazon and online retailers, making out capitalism is so bad that consumers deserve to be blown up for engaging in it. Episode 8, the one about female, female empowerment, again, where men, and where, where men are evil for discriminating against women in past times, uh, for not treating them as equals and persecuting them as fucking witches. Episode 9, the one about female empowerment, this is getting repetitive, where, where single fathers are made to look evil for not looking after the children properly, and where a pervert that deceives people by telling by telling them lies, making itself look like something that isn't, so that I can go home with them and enjoy the company, and then be fed by the doctor after appealing to her as a talking fucking frog. Okay, episode 10, right? The one where a pair of accomplices who willingly assisted in and carried out mass genocide on a planetary scale led off by the doctor, but not, not so much as a slap on the wrist because they're only following someone else's orders despite being intelligent enough to know fucking better. Well, I'm sorry, chin balls and fucking with again. No, get the fuck out, get the fuck home, give him a show back. End of. Bye.